In this lesson, we are ordering decimals. If you've seen the video for lesson N1A, where we're ordering integers or whole numbers, you'll see that the process is very, very similar. Let's take a look at question one. We have a load of decimals here. And just as we did in lesson N1A, what we have to do is look at the biggest place value column. Now, in this case, that is the units column. And for all of these numbers, we've got zero in the units column. They are all zero point something. That means just by looking at the units column, we cannot tell which is the biggest and which is the smallest. So we have to go and look at the next place value column along. That's the tenths place value column. This particular question is nice and easy because all of the digits in the tenths place value column are different. So we just need to put them in order from lowest to highest. That will give us the following. In question two, we're going to do the same thing. We'll start with the biggest place value column in all of these numbers, that is the units column. And again, in all of these cases, we've got the same digit in there, we've got six. That means we can't tell just by looking at the units column, which of these is biggest and which is smallest. So we've got to look at the next place value column, and that is the tenths column. So the first digit after the decimal point. I'll just underline those. The smallest digit there is zero. So that means 6.04 is our smallest number. Looking at those underlined digits now, we see that we have got an eight, a four, an eight and a four. So we're going to be looking at the ones with the fours because those are smaller than the eights. But which one of these is the smaller number? Well, because they both have a four in that place value column, we then have to look at the next place value column along. Looking at that hundredths place value column, we can see that 6.44 is the smaller number than 6.48. So that makes 6.44 the next one, followed by 6.48. We've got two remaining numbers, and they both begin with 6.8. So again, we need to go and look at the next place value column along, the hundredths column. And here we've got a 4 and an 8. The four is the smaller number, so that is going to give us our order. We've got 6.84 next, and 6.88 last. In this particular case, because all of the numbers have the same number of decimal places, we can actually ignore the decimal point. You could pretend they were all whole numbers just by taking out the decimal point and put them in order, and you would get exactly this list if you then pop the decimal point back in. That technique won't always work, however. You've got to be careful, as we'll see in later examples. In question three, we've again got a load of numbers. We look at the biggest place value column first of all, and in this case you'll see that for these numbers, the units column is the biggest place value column, but here we've got a number where we get into the tens place value column. So that number we can put straight away on the end. That's going to be our biggest number. Looking at what's left, we've got some numbers which have a seven, some with a six, and some with an eight in the units column. So the smallest one is going to be one of the ones with a six in it. We can't tell just by looking at the units column though, which is bigger, 6.6 .6 or 6.7 we have to look at the next place value column along. That's the tenths column, and we see that the six that I've underlined is smaller than the seven that I've underlined. So 6.6 .6 is the smallest one, and then it's followed by 6.7. Now we've got 7.6 .6 and 8.7 left, and looking at the biggest place value column, we can see that seven is smaller than eight. So we don't even need to worry about comparing the tenths place value column.
In question four, we'll do the same as usual. We'll look for the biggest place value column and that's the units for all of these. And there's only one that's got anything bigger than a zero and that's 4.7. So straight away we can say that's our biggest number and put that on the end. Now all the other numbers are zero point something so we have to look at the next place value column along to tell them apart. We've got a four, a four, a four, and a four. They are all 0 0.4 something, so we still can't tell them apart. We've got to go to the next place value column along. And that is the hundreds column, which I'm going to underline now. Now, in this case, we've got a three, a seven, a three, and a seven. So the ones with the threes are going to be the smaller numbers. They've both got a three though, so we have to look at the next place value column along. And in this case, we've got a seven, so we've got seven thousandths. But in this case, we haven't got anything. We could put a zero there. We've got zero thousandths. So the smallest number is 0 0.43 or 0 0.430 if you prefer. That's followed by 0 0.437. Next we've got these two, we've got 0 0.473 and 0 0.47. They've both got a 7 in that hundredths column, so we've got to look at the next one along. We've got three thousandths over here, and we haven't got any thousandths for that number, 0 0.47. Remember we could put a 0 on the end, just to make it easier to compare. So that means 0 0.470 or 0 0.47 is the smaller of those two numbers and 0 0.473 is the larger of those last two numbers. So there we have it, all of those numbers listed in order. At this point I want to highlight a really common misconception. A lot of students will say to me that these numbers are the wrong way around because they would look at this and think of it as 0 0.437 and this as 47, which is obviously smaller than 437. But what's really going on here is that we've got four tenths in both cases and three hundredths over here and seven hundredths here, which makes 0 0.47 bigger. And a lot of students feel a lot happier when I write this out as 0 0.470. Now that it's got three digits after the decimal point, it's easier to compare with that one. And what you'll see is that we're effectively comparing 437 with 470. However, I don't like highlighting this point because it encourages students to say the wrong thing. This number here is 0 0.437. We never say 0 0.437. I have made a big deal about really understanding place value, but for the sake of illustration, I'll show you how putting zeros on the ends of these might make them easier to compare. What I'm going to do is look for a number with the most number of digits after the decimal point, and that's this one. We've got four digits after the decimal point, so to make these easy to compare, I'm going to want to have all of these with four digits after the decimal point. And that means I can put 0, 0, 0 on the end of that one. I've now got four digits after the decimal point. Here, I've got two digits after the decimal point already, so I need two more. So we've now got 4.8900. Zero, zero. With this number, I only need to put on an extra zero and the same here. And you could look at these and Ignore the decimal point and compare them as if they were whole numbers now. I'm still going to do this question making sure that we understand place value however. We'll start with the biggest place value column and in all of these cases it's the units column. So we can't compare them looking at the units column alone. I'm going to underline the tenths column in red. We've got nine tenths, eight tenths, zero tenths, eight tenths and eight tenths. The smallest of those was the zero, and that means the smallest number was this one here. So we can cross that out and add it to our list. So 4.090, 0 
and really we don't need that extra zero on the end but I've put it in there because that's how the question was given to me. Next we've got three numbers with an eight in the tenths column and one with a nine. So the one with the nine is obviously the biggest so I might as well put that on the end 4.9 like that we've dealt with it. How do we tell all of these 4.8 somethings apart? Well we've got to look at the next place value column along, the hundredths column. We've got nine hundredths there, zero hundredths there, and three hundredths there. So we don't have to go any further because all of those are different numbers, we can just put them in order. So the smallest was the one with the zero hundredths, that's this one here. So we've got 4.809 The next one is the one with the three hundredths, because three is a smaller number than nine. So that gives us 4.8395 as our next one. And then we've got 4.89. And that's it. In this example, we are dealing with these symbols here. They've got special names. The greater than symbol is this one here. That means that the number you put on the left is going to be greater or bigger than the number you put on the right. For example, we know that 7 is greater than 4. The less than symbol goes the other way. For example, we know that 10 is less than 11. Going to this question now we've got 1.7 and 1.41. They both got one unit, so that's no good. We've got to go to the next place value column along. 1.7 has got seven tenths, 1.41 has only got four tenths. So 1.7 is the bigger number. It's greater than 1.41, which means we want this symbol in there. For the next one, we've got zero in the units column, then we've got zero in the tenths column, for this number and 7 in the tenths column for this number. So 0 0.7 is the bigger number. That means 0 0.072 is smaller or less than 0 0.7. With negative numbers you have to take real care. You would all hopefully spot that positive 0 0.7 is smaller than positive 0 0.8 but with negative numbers, it helps to think on a number line. Negative 0 0.7 is 0 0.7 below 0. So that would be somewhere around here. Negative 0 0.8 is 0 0.8 below 0. Now 0 0.8, the positive number 0 0.8, is bigger than the positive number 0 0.7. That means 0 0.8 below is further below than negative 0 0.7 and that means negative 0 0.8 goes somewhere around here. So that means negative 0 0.8 is the lower number and therefore negative 0 0.7 is greater than that negative 0 0.7 is higher up the number line than negative 0 0.8.